All right, we're holding Perek Shalishi, the third chapter of Mishlei, the wisdom of Solomon. Mishlei means parables, proverbs. He shares with us many of his experiences in life. The advice that he gives us, according to our tradition, is definitely al Piruah HaKodesh. He's divinely inspired. He's not making up stories over here. It's a very important book, many lessons to be learned. In the very first two chapters, it was more of an introduction about the importance of learning the wisdom of the Torah, the importance of this book that he's composing, that he wants us to, to learn, to pay close attention to everything that is being said. In chapter 3, he actually begins to talk about different areas in life. As we will see in the whole Sefer of Mishlei, there are many areas that are covered, whether it's friendships, relationships, marriage, business partners and the like. In all these areas he has some very important advice. He begins with the first pasuk, Beni Torati al Tishkach, all this Torah that you're about to learn, <clears throat> that I've spoken about in great detail in the first two chapters, don't forget it. In other words, you're going to be putting in a lot of effort to learn this Torah. You're going to be spending a lot of time learning this Torah because you value it. It is our tradition, it is our mitzvah to learn the Torah, but make an effort not to forget it. How do you not forget it? Make sure you review it. Don't just say that you've learned it once, you know it all, there's no reason for you to review it. That is why we have the custom in Simcha Torah, as soon as we finish the Torah, the last parasha, Vezot Beracha, we immediately begin with Parashat Bereshit. It's, it's always continuous, it's never ending. You learn Torah when you were young, you continue to learn when you're old. It's never ending. You do not retire from learning Torah. In the same way that Torah has to be fresh in our minds, that we need to review, we need to set aside time to learn this Torah, in order that we do not forget, the mitzvot have to be guarded in our hearts. And what that means is that many people do things as a, as a routine. They're used to it, they don't do it with all their heart. In order for the mitzvah to be fresh, it has to be always done with excitement, it has to be done sincerely, one has to be looking forward. In Pesach, for example, is a hard holiday in some ways. All the many preparations, the difficult work, the cleaning of the house, nevertheless it is a very important holiday. One should be looking forward to it. Because our tradition says that in Pesach we were redeemed, in Pesach Bezat Hashem we will be redeemed. The beginning of redemption begins, at least, it takes place during this month. It's a very special month. Nisan means Nisim, it means miracles. So this is a very propitious time of the year. And despite all the hard work, we get ready. In the same way that our forefathers left Egypt quickly, we have to be prepared to grab a suitcase and leave if the time comes. We have, to be, we have to get into that spirit, even though this holiday is celebrating something that occurred so many thousands of years ago, so long ago. Nevertheless, in all the preparations that we make, that is what we have to have in mind. Therefore, the mitzvot have to have a place in our heart. They always have to be fresh and not be done as a, as a routine. It is very easy to spend a lot of time learning it is very easy for somebody who has done Teshuvah to fall back. All that has been learned to be forgotten. And it's hard to accumulate a lot of knowledge. It takes time, a lot of effort, a lot of diligence. And it can be easily forgotten. It's much easier to forget than it is to learn. In other words, it happens much quicker. You can spend many years learning something, working hard on something, but lose it very, very quickly. Ki orech yamim ushnot chayim v'shalom yosifu lach. He says, if you follow the Torah, and you observe the mitzvot, then length of days and long life and peace shall be added to you. Now we have to understand what this means. What do you mean days will be added, long life will be added? Everybody when they're born, they have a certain mazal, a certain number of years that HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides, according to his cheshbon, how long everyone is going to live. Every individual has a number of years, whether it's 60, 70, 80, it could be less, it could be more. And that's determined by his mazal, that's determined from day one. But according to our tradition, Am Yisrael is me'al ha-mazal. The Jewish nation is above the mazal. And what that means is that we are able to change our mazal. It's difficult. It's not always in the best of our interest to do. But it can happen. 
It can happen at Rosh Hashanah. It can happen at other times of the year that through our prayers and through our deeds we can change our mazal for the better or for the worse, Chas Shalom. What he says over here is, Ki orach yamim ushnot haim, lengthy years, long life, will be given to you. What that means is that this chut, through the merit of the Torah, one's mazal can change. And if one's mazal was that he was supposed to have a short life, there have been stories or, or people's lives were lengthened as a result of charity, as a result of some other act of kindness. Ki orach yamim ushnot haim v'shalom yosif means it could happen that your life will be lengthened. As we know, there are certain mitzvot in the Torah, certain commandments that have that quality or that promise that Hashem makes. That you will have a lengthy life. By kabet tavicha betimecha, honoring one's parents. Even though our tradition says that this long life is an eternal life in the Olam Abba, nevertheless, these mitzvot are very unique. They have certain powers to them that they can protect one from times of danger. And if Hazar something was supposed to happen to him as a result of him having this merit of this mitzvah or mitzvot, his life can be spared. So this Torah has the ability to spare one from danger to lengthen one's life. However, he says over here, Ushnot Chaim. He divides it up into Orech Yamim Ushnot Chaim, years of life. So the question is, are the years that do not have life? What does it mean years of life? Other than lengthy years. So the rabbis tell us that man's life is divided into three parts. There is the Aliyah, the Amida, and the Yerida. There is the going up, they're standing up straight, and then they're just going down. And in those early years of our life, we're going up. It's like we're going up on a ladder. We're becoming smarter, we're growing physically and spiritually, hopefully. It's the years that we are healthier, that we have much more strength and energy. Then comes the years where we slow down, we're standing. And then begins the years where we begin to go downhill, as they say. When a person goes downhill, when he, in his elder years, he does not have the same strength that he had in his early years. His comprehension is not as good, it's not as clear, he does not function as well. Rabbis tell us, and this is basically insinuated in this verse, in this pasuk, that those who immerse themselves in Torah, the Torah will be with them even the latter years. And what that means is that they will be able to function and as you, will, you may have seen, there have been great rabbis that even in their 90s and in their 100s, their mind is with them, they have the clarity, they're able to reason, they don't, Baruch Hashem, have any major diseases that are incapacitating their mental faculties. They may not be physically able to move around easily, but Ushnot Chayim means that they are blessed, that they have years of life. Which years? The latter years, the years where we weaken where we're usually going down, they are able to continue to grow. Beshalom Yosifu Lechai, you will also have peace. In other words, you will, have a pe- you will be at peace, you will have a good life. All of this in the merit of the Torah. Next Pasuk. Chesed ve'emet al ya'azvucha. Koshrem al gargerotecha, kotvem al libecha. In English, let not grace and truth forsake you. In other words, one should always be involved in acts of kindness, uh, in doing favors to others, and in being truthful and sincere. These midot, these characteristics, should, should, you should never forsake, never abandon them. Koshrem al gargerotecha. Bind them around your neck. Kotvem al libecha. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Now, what is he talking about here when he says chesed ve'emet? What's the significance of chesed ve'emet? <coughs> chesed means kindness, and emet means truth. These two, Chesed Ve'emet, are actually a representation of, what the, of the essence of Torah. The essence of Torah, if you were to look at the Torah, the mitzvot, you will find the commonality of the majority, of a good number of the mitzvot, is acts of kindness and acts of truthfulness, of not cheating people, doing business honestly, being truthful, being upright and righteous, and doing acts of chesed, of helping, whether it's helping the poor, and even helping those who you do not like, who you're not in good terms with, as the Torah describes them, your enemy. This is the bastion of the Torah, this is the essence of Torah. Chesed ve'emet, therefore, al these characteristics 
hold on to them at all times because they represent the Torah, the essence of Torah. But why does it say not, not to abandon? Why would somebody do them and let go of them? It is possible for someone after many, many years, he may claim, listen, I've already done my share. I've already done my part. Let somebody else do that. And the Torah says, Shnei reminds us, you don't retire from these mitzvot. You don't retire from doing a chesed demet. You don't let go of this. This should always be with you for the rest of your life. There was a, uh, a wealthy man who once, I think, I think it was the Chafetz Chaim who once approached him. And the Chafetz Chaim asked him for some charity for a very special cause. And the man says, listen, I've already given tzedakah. I've already done my share. Latzet Yedei Chova is an expression meaning that I've already done my share and I've already completed my mitzvah. In other words, I don't have to do more than what I've already done. So the Chafetz Chaim tells him, listen, you want to hear what it's going to be like when you go upstairs after 120, what they're going to say about your attitude? He says, yes, I know myself and I've, I've been a good man, I've done... He says, yes, I know, but this is what's going to happen upstairs. You're going to get upstairs and you're going to open the books, they're going to examine your deeds, and they're going to say, okay, this man did tzedakah, he did acts of kindness, and they're going to give you a spot in Gan Eden. Then you're going to look around and see all the, your friends that did a lot more tzedakah than you, and you will see that they're in a much higher and better position than you are. And you're going to start complaining. Why are they in a better position than I am? I've also done tzedakah. So they're going to say, listen, you've done tzedakah only to do the bare minimum, to be yotzei de hova, just to do the bare minimum. That is exactly what we do over here. You have a chedek lolam ba, we just are yotzei de hova to give you the bare minimum of what we promised to give you. Since that's all you did was the bare minimum to fulfill the mitzvah, that's all we're doing in our promise to give you a share of Gan Eden. We'll just give you the bare minimum. But one should never have this attitude of just saying, I've done my share. There's not such a thing as one's share. You can always do more and more. We don't retire from Avodat Hashem, from the service of Hashem. He adds that this chesed ve'emet koshrema galgerotecha tayim around your neck. Tying it around one's neck has two meanings. The neck is where the vocal cords are. So some commentaries say, talk about it. Chesed ve'emet is something that you should encourage others to do. It is something that you should speak about, something that you should teach others. It's not something that for you to just do privately. Some people like to give tzedakah anonymously. It's called matan baseter. Matan baseter is very powerful. To give tzedakah privately is very powerful because you're not taking any credit for it. So you're not going to become arrogant as a result. The poor man is not going to know who he got the money from, so he's not going to be embarrassed. So Matamba said that giving tzedakah privately is a very beautiful thing. It's one of the highest levels of tzedakah. But there are times where you don't want to give anonymously. If there is a major appeal to help Israel in, the, in, in time of need, and there's an appeal to raise money for Israel, you can't say I'm going to give anonymously. Because if you give publicly and you announce the amount that you want to give, you may be encouraging others to give and others will learn from you. So there's a time for everything. There's a time for Matamba Sete, which is a very good thing. But Chesed Ve'emet, Koshrem al you have to time around your neck. It is something that you have to be public about. It's not something to be private about. People have to learn from you. The importance of Chesed Ve'emet. So you have to vocalize it. You have to verbalize it. That's al gargerotecha. The second idea behind the word gargerotecha is that just like we put a necklace around our neck, we show it. What are we doing? We're putting on something that we like. We're adorning ourselves with something precious, something that we very much value. Chesed v'met should be valuable to you. It should be something that you should be proud of. Just like you're proud of and happy to wear something. Don't be ashamed. There are many Jews that are ashamed to show their Jewishness. They take off their kippah, they hide any vestige of their Judaism. You should be proud, you should be happy. Chesed ve'emet is something to be proud about, something that you should publicize, something that you should make people aware of, and be part of, and be happy to perform them. Kotvem aluach libecha, and write them on the tablet of your heart. What does that mean? 
what do you what do we usually write when we write something down whether it's on our palm pilot whether it's on a piece of paper it's something that we want to remember it's something that's important to us Hasev Emet should be on your priority list it should be written down it's not something that you should just take it casually as it comes whenever it comes it's something that you should pursue Shalom you have to pursue peace Right? You have to pr- pursue making peace amongst people, doing favors to people. This is something that you should pursue. Make it a priority. That's, what, that's the meaning of writing it down on your heart. Writing it down meaning make it a part of your life, include it in your set of priorities. Now Shalom Melech goes and talks a little bit about the results of doing all this. If a person is kind to others, he does chesed ve'emet with others, and he will find favor and good understanding in the sight of Hashem and man. In other words, he will have earned himself a good reputation. People will like him. He will find grace in their eyes. Now what does that mean? It means because he is behaving himself, because he is doing the right thing, then people will like him. That's the simple meaning. People will like him and Hashem will like him. And we have a tradition that if you want to know if somebody is liked by Hashem, look around if people like him. If people like someone, not for his money, but truthfully, they like him for what he is, it's an indication that Bashamayim, they also like him. Now, Bashamayim, they may have some complaints about him, that he's not fully observant, but generally speaking, if people are happy with an individual, if there are no major complaints about someone, that means that in Bashamayim, they're happy. If you don't hear good things about someone, if there's a lot of people talking about someone, then there's something wrong. That means upstairs they're also not happy with him. It's a mirror image of what's going down on here. One who is therefore engaged in chesed ve'emet is going to be motzehen be'nei lokim ve'adam, both by men and by Hashem, the two of them. This, This particular pasuk over here is also in a way instructions. It's not only telling us as a result of you behaving yourself you're going to be liked. It's also an instruction. Shalomah Melech is telling us this is what you should aspire to. This is what you should want to, to find favor in the eyes of Hashem and men. In other words, to be pleasing. People should like you. You should aspire to that, to receive your, to make yourself a good name. Right? Tov Shem Hashem and Tov. It's better to have a good name than anything else. So this is something that one should aspire to acquire for himself. Not money, right? not riches, but a good name. And that's what the rabbis tell us. They learn from this. In the same way that you have to aspire uh, to find favor in the eyes of Hashem, that Hashem should be happy with you, that He should approve of your deeds. In the same way, one has to aspire that people should like Him. And what does that mean? People should like him. People should have no complaints about him. As the Pasuk says, that you, you need to be clean. Your reputation has to be spotless, not only in the eyes of Hashem, but in the eyes of human beings. But wait a minute. Is it possible to, be, to have a good reputation in the eyes of Hashem and not in the eyes of human beings? Yes, it's, it's possible sometimes. There are some people that couldn't care less what people think of them. That's a certain attitude. And I'm very, I personally am very familiar with this type of, uh, of attitude. Because it, sometimes, you know, it's just very tempting to those who are stubborn and those who have a mind of their own to not listen to what others have to say and to not care what others think of them. And that's very nice and cute uh, in, sometimes. Because, uh, the reason I say sometimes is because you don't want to have to hear what everybody has to say, especially if their thoughts and their mindset is not in accordance with the Torah. But generally speaking, one has to be careful with what what others think of him and what others say of him, say about him. In the same way that we want to be sure that Hashem is happy with us, we want to be sure that people have only good things to say about us. And the reason why this is important, why is it important what other people have to say? Let them think and let them say whatever they want. If you know yourself that you have a spotless record, we're talking about somebody that knows himself to have a spotless record, why should he care what other people have to say? The commentary is explained for three reasons you should care. Reason number one 
Because if you're doing some, something that they think is wrong, they might learn from you. You do not have a chance here to correct what they are misunderstanding about you. So therefore you have to intervene, you have to speak up, you have to correct the wrong impression of you, if that's what they have. So you just can't keep quiet, keep to yourself. That's number one. Number two, you don't want them speaking Lashonara about you. You don't want them to commit the sin of speaking uh, evil, of, speak, of gossiping against you. And number three, one has to show some respect for other people's opinions. So you can't just be mezalzel. You can't just minimize people's opinions. You have to show them that you care, that you take their opinion into consideration, and that you listen to what they have to say. So Umsahim the Sechel Tov Ben Elokim Vadan therefore is a very important ambition of every Jew is to make himself a good name, to be careful that he has a good reputation in the eyes of Hashem and in the eyes of human beings. Alright, now we go on to another area where Shlomo Melech gives us very important advice and that is the area of Bitachon in Hashem. Many of us have strong Emunah, we have strong faith in Hashem, we believe in Him, we know that He exists, we know that He created the world, but we sometimes forget that He also manages the world. He's in control, He's the captain of the ship, He's the one that's navigating us, and we don't have complete free will. Even though we have some free will, we don't have complete free will. And this is a very important characteristic, a very important concept, and we've spoken about it before, given a whole lecture just about Emunayim Bittachom Hashem, the difference between the two. So Shalomu Melech introduces us to this and says as follows, when it comes to bitachon, have complete trust in Hashem with all your heart. As opposed to what? I mean, I, that's obvious. It's a good thing. No, Shlomo Melech is saying, it's not just trust in Hashem. It's and lean not on your own understanding. So Shlomo Melech really is trying to give us here another idea. It's not so much the bitachon Hashem, which is very, very important. Here, He's trying to warn us that the reason why you have to have complete bitachon Hashem is that you cannot trust yourself. You can never trust yourself, not even until the day you die. Even if you've spent 80 years on this planet and you've gone through a lot in life, never trust your feelings, never trust... Not 100% trust yourself completely. And we're going to see why. But have complete trust in Hashem. If Hashem promised something, Hashem will deliver. If you don't fully understand what's going on, continue to trust in Hashem. Betach el Hashem is something very, very important. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining what, what is going on over here. What is the significance of trusting in Hashem? Even though perhaps he elaborates a little bit more about this in his book Kohelet, you will see it in Mishlei, interspersed in the various Pesukim, that it's a matter of fact that everything is Minash Everything that happens in this world, except for the fear of heaven that we develop and we acquire, the mitzvot that we fulfill on our own, everything, who we marry, for the most part, the children that we have, the profession that we will have, how much we will earn, kind of kids that we will, that we will give birth to, all of this is Bidei Shamayim. And it's a concept that not everybody fully understands or appreciates. But because everything is Bidei Shamayim, we have no choice but to trust in Him, that everything is for the good, that everything is with cheshbon. Because if we do not think this way, the typical reaction of someone having lost a major deal where he could have made a few million dollars is, ah, oh, what a terrible mistake I just made. Or oh, how could I fall for that? Or oh, how could I lend that guy money without taking co-signers? Which we'll talk about eventually. Everything is minashamay. As there's a saying in Yiddish, if something is bashert, if something is meant to me, if something is meant to be, we become blind. We don't see. We don't realize what we just did. Because it was meant to be. And because everything happens in Hashemayim, and He navigates us to where we need to be, and what we need to do, betah el Hashem, we therefore have to have betahon Hashem, that this is what needs to happen. This is what needed to happen. This is not something that we on our own decided. Unless, again, it's a, it is a mitzvah, unless it has to do with Yirat Hashem, 
If we put on tefillin tomorrow morning, if we go to pray, that's up to us. If we keep Shabbat, it's up to us. If we eat non-kosher food, halila, that we decided. He doesn't decide that. We decide areas of Judaism that concern the mitzvot and Yerat Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides almost everything else. And since Hashem decides almost everything else, betah al Hashem. One has to develop this betachon in Hashem. And if he does so, he will not have the worries, he will not have any concerns, he will be able to sleep well. Not in the beginning maybe, he, he still may be stressed out, he, may, he still may have some headaches, but hopefully he will not have a stroke, he will not get a heart attack, which many people had. You know, whether it was during the depression, or during other times, the, where people undergo difficult times, and we cannot judge them, we don't know how we would behave and react if we were under these circumstances. That is why it's important to develop. Betah, betah, el Hashem, trust in Hashem fully. Bechol libecha, with all your heart. Not halfway, but with all your heart. And that's not something that's easily done. Because emunah, we receive from our parents, we're almost spoon-fed the emunah at home. And it's easy. Why believe in the Big Bang? And evolution doesn't make sense. It just makes sense logically that God designed the world, that there's somebody behind this, that there is a purpose for all of this. Just like there's a purpose for every limb of the body. Does anybody here want to get rid of his kidney? Or of his liver? Or of his pancreas? I don't think so. There's a need for all of these things that I just mentioned. If there is a need, that means there's a purpose. It was designed for a purpose. The human being was designed for a purpose then. The world most probably was designed for a purpose too. Because everything works and functions logically. There must be a design. If there is a design, there must be an architect, an engineer, who has a plan. So that, that's all called emunah. It makes sense. Emunah is not difficult. It's not as difficult. And even emunah, some people would rather not uh, believe in it because, as we've explained many times, it, it, com- it makes you commit yourself to a certain discipline that some people do not want to have in their life. They'd like, they'd like to do whatever they, their heart desires. So all of that is emunah. Emunah is a basic understanding of Hashem's uh, role in creating this world. Whereas bitachon is that He did not only create, but He continues to manage and to control everything in this world, from the, rota- from the Earth's rotation on its axis, and it never stops, to feeding even the smallest microbes in the world. Everything is sustained and maintained by the Ashgaha El by the Divine Providence of Hashem. This is something that is much more difficult. This happens only with time and training. And one needs to develop the true Bitachom Hashem. Becholi Becha, that it should be with all our heart. And as a result of, of developing this, we will come to understand, hopefully, that El Binatcha Al Tishem, we don't want to rely on our own understanding. We don't want to take a chance. And it's not us, it's not kohi ve'otsim yadi, it's not my wisdom, it's not my strength that have, been, that have allowed me to accomplish what I've accomplished. It must be from Hashem. So el binat chazishayin, it's dangerous to rely on your own thinking. It's dangerous to think that you can make decisions on your own without Hashem's help. Chaz shalom. We need Hashem's help. We need His involvement because He knows what's best for us. We do not always know what's best for us. We say it in the Pasuk every day, Rabot Machshavot Belevish, Vatsat Hashem Mitakum. Men have many thoughts. Human beings have thoughts. They have plans. What they plan to do. Politicians have plans. And they work hard on following these plans. Rabot Machshavot Belevish, Vatsat Hashem Mitakum. It's Hashem's plan that counts. It's whatever He has in mind that will come about. Not what men, what human beings have in mind. Because everything has been Hashem right. No concerns. Shlomo Melech emphasizes that you cannot rely on your own understanding because if you do, you're going to have a hard time working on yourself. Working on one's midot, on one's character, requires the, the disposition, the willingness to listen to what others have to say. Criticism, comments, and the like. If a person relies only on his own understanding of how things are, it will give him a harder time with correcting his faults because he's relying only on his own understanding on the way he, see fi- he sees things you cannot rely just on what you think you have to listen to what others have to say in Yiddish there's an expression listen to what everybody has to say 
Give him a chance. Listen to everybody. You make up your own mind. Nobody listen to what everybody has to say, and then you make up your own mind. What will you gain from this? You've heard a hundred opinions, you've become smarter. You're able to analyze things a little bit better, perhaps. You don't rely just on your own understanding. Another idea behind the words I think it's mentioned in Sefer Hasidim is that a person should be careful not to bring himself to a Nisayon A Nisayon means a challenge You don't want to bring yourself into a situation where you're testing yourself because you don't know if you're going to pass the test There were two rabbis it's mentioned in the Gemara who were at a crossroads They were at a crossroads the two ways would lead to their destination they had a choice to go right or left what was the difference? if they went left there was a lot of idols on the way a lot of idols Abu Dazara. if they went on the right there was a brothel of prostitutes did I pronounce that right? yeah so they had a question which way should they go? they're both no good so one of them says, you know what, let's go through where the Avodah Zarah is. Today we don't have a Yetzirah of Avodah Zarah. But if we go here, where the Zonot are, where the prostitutes are, we're going to have to contend with this challenge of this Yetzirah, that is a very powerful Yetzirah. So the other rabbi says, no, no, no. Let's go to where the Zonot are, so that we should see them and hold ourselves back and get rewarded for it. Because if you are tempted with a sin and you hold yourself back then you were rewarded for it and that's what they did and as soon as the Zonot saw the rabbis they all went into their into their rooms in other words they didn't stay outside they were I guess embarrassed of them but anyway the rabbis saw them of course didn't do anything Baruch Hashem in the end when they came to their final destination this matter was discussed did they do the right thing or not and the answer was for ordinary people this would not have been the right thing to do for them it was fine because they were very strong they were able to control the Yetzirah but for an ordinary man do not put yourself in that situa- situation where you, where you say to yourself I'm going to see, I'm going to look I'm going to analyze everything and I'm going to hold myself back and not do anything no, nobody knows what he will do in the end if he will be able to control himself now don't take any chances don't take any chances don't bring yourself unnecessarily into a nisayon, into a challenge you don't know because even though you were able to hold yourself back yesterday yesterday's Yetzirah is not the same one today he wears different clothes every day, he changes the circumstances are different so just because you were succeeded once who says you will succeed again so don't take any unnecessary changes, chances don't bring yourself into a nisayon it could be very difficult Another idea of the, of the meaning of these words will be Nathal Tishayin, that Shalom Melech is, is reminding us Listen, there are many things that the human mind is not capable of fully grasping You'll never understand everything that there is to understand Just some things that we never understand A lot of people have a hard time understanding the Holocaust Even though the Holocaust relatively is easier to understand Because we have many Pesukim the Torah That tell us why Holocausts occur Right? We don't know why it was so serious, why it was so severe, and why so many people died. We don't know all the reasons behind Hashem's cheshbonot. The human mind is not fully capable of understanding everything. That is why the Torah does not give us explanations of the chukim, the very difficult mitzvot, red heifer. How is it that the ashes of the red cow clean somebody who's become unclean? The ashes? You need a red cow? You know, these are chukim. The Torah does not get into a discussion of the reasoning of the mitzvot for a variety of reasons. The Torah does not want us to do the mitzvah for that reason. The Torah wants us to do the mitzvah because Hashem said so. The Torah does not want us to pick and choose a mitzvah based on how much reward we're going to receive. So there's no reward discussed in the Torah. So the explanations are not always given, but especially the difficult ones are very difficult. Even if they were to be given, we would not fully understand. Many of them are Kabbalistic. They border on, on the mystic. So therefore, the human mind is not fully capable of understanding everything that there is to understand. And therefore, what? When we don't understand something, what should we do? Betach in Hashem. Trust in Hashem. So Shalom Melech is telling us, there's various ideas in this pasuk. Trust in Hashem, because you cannot fully understand when something happens to you. 
something especially that you don't like and you have a hard time understanding why it happened next pasuk in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path in all your ways know him what that means is that whatever we do whether we work whether we build regardless of whatever, whatever it is that we accomplish we must remember at all times that Hashem is the one that gives us the strength and the ability and the talent to do so it's therefore a good idea to get used to saying the words Be'ezrat Hashem Imirtseh Hashem that everything depends on Hashem if Hashem wills it so then it will happen if I succeed or not depends on Hashem if something does not happen the way we liked it to happen we say Gamzule Tova it's also for the good in all your ways whether something occurs good or whether something does not, is not so good Rabbi tells we have to make a blessing when something bad happens what we think is bad, we perceive it as bad, but it's not bad. Baruch Dayan Ahmed, when somebody passes away, right? He's the right, rightful, he's the righteous judge. He knows what he's doing. So we thank Hashem for everything that He does. And everything that we do, we give Hashem credit. The Chol Derachech is giving credit to Hashem. If you do so, He will straighten your path. What that means is that if you give credit to Hashem if you fully put your trust in Hashem if you acknowledge Hashem in every way then you will not fall you will not fail you will not uh, make mistakes He will straighten your paths you will not stumble our decisions will be the right decisions another idea behind the words is that when you do something do it for the sake of Hashem do it Hashem Shamaim even, and that's also even when it comes to our bodily needs when we go to sleep, what should we have in mind? HaKadosh Baruch I'm going to sleep because I want to wake up the next morning and have the strength to serve you why do I eat? because I want to be healthy so I can fulfill the mitzvot that's the meaning of Bechor Derachecha in all your ways, even in your personal ways in those physical ways that are important to you for your physical body know Him, remember Him in other words, have in mind that everything that you do is the Shem Shamaim. The Chol Maasecha Yehu L'Shem Shamaim. Rabbi all you did should be the Shem Shamaim. When we say Ve'Aptai Tashem Elokecha Bechol Levavecha with both of your hearts, we have two hearts. It says how your hearts in plural. So the Rabbis tell us with you both Yitzarim, with your Yitzarat Tov and with your Yitzara. What does with Yitzara mean? With all your physical needs, that which you do for yourself, for your own personal needs, even that should be L'Shem Shamaim. So Behu Yehasher Or Chotecha, if one does it this way, if one does everything for the sake of heaven, he's going to straighten out our paths, which means that we will, gonna, we will receive assistance from heaven. Commentaries explain, assistance of heaven is even in areas such as giving help to others. Hashem will tell us who to help and who not to help. How much to give tzedakah and how much not to give. In other words, everything that we do will be straight. If we fully put our trust in Him and do everything for His sake, then He will make sure that we do the right thing. Next pasuk. Don't be smart in your eyes. Don't be wise in your eyes. Fear Hashem and depart from evil. What does it mean, don't be smart in your own eyes? First of all, even if you learned a lot, there's still a lot to learn. Don't think you've finished everything. Don't think that you're just a Chacham, and uh, therefore there's nothing else to learn. There's always something to learn. Don't consider yourself a Chacham. And even if you're a Chacham, listen to others, to what others have to say. So I'll tell you, Chacham Binecha, don't consider yourself ever wise that you don't have to listen to what others have to say. Why? Because your ultimate goal has to be, and that's how Kohelet finishes his book, the end of everything is to be fearful of God. Since that has to be the goal, that you have to be concerned about what Hashem thinks of you, that you're doing the right thing, you don't want to take a chance. Then why think of yourself as smart and not listen to others, what others have to say? Listen to others, especially when they criticize. You may be wrong, and you don't know that. If you consider yourself wise, you won't listen to everybody. You may make a mistake. Since the goal is Yerai Hashem, to be fearful of Hashem, isn't that what you want to be? Then you want to be careful. The Sur Miran, you want to stay away from evil, you want to maintain a distance from evil, you don't want to make a mistake. So therefore, therefore don't consider yourself smart. 
And another idea behind the words Al Tihacham Beinecha Don't ever say it's not going to happen to me The author of this book made that mistake Shlomo Melech When he took too many wives The Torah says you shouldn't The king should not do it Or should not overdo it But Shlomo Melech says it won't happen to me The Torah, I know, I know why, why the Torah wrote it Because it, it's risky But I'm Baruch Hashem a very smart man Shlomo Melech says of himself what the Torah says will not will happen will not happen to me, and of course it happened to him. So Al don't ever say you're smart and therefore this will never happen to you. If there is a halakha, it applies to everybody. If you need to be cautious, you need to be cautious. Because Yirait Hashem Vesulmina, your ultimate goal is to fear Hashem and to stay away from evil, right? So you have to be extra careful. Rifut tehi leshorecha veshikui leatzmotecha. Now, Shlomo Melech tells us that all this Torah, all these mitzvot, some people have a very difficult time with it. They teach their children, go and get yourself a degree, go to college, become a lawyer, become a doctor. This Torah will not do you any good, will not do you any benefit. So Shlomo Melech says, this will be to you as health to your navel. Rifutihi leshorecha, veshikui leatzmotecha. Shikui is the marrow. The bone needs the marrow. In other words, this is very healthy for you. This is very important to you. Now, the reason why he says that, that why this is very healthy to you, is for another reason. Many times people have a hard time doing a mitzvah because they don't understand the mitzvah. If you don't explain to me why I have to keep kosher, why I can't have alligator meat, if you don't explain that to me uh, satisfactory, then I won't keep it, chaz shalom. Some people will not do anything unless they fully understand it. Ask them, by the way, why do you go on a plane or drive a car? Do you fully understand what, you, what, what is happening in the plane, what is happening in your car, the combustion system? You're still driving it even though you don't fully understand it. You do not want to fulfill the Torah, you do not want to do the mitzvot because you do not fully understand? Okay, Shlomo Amalek says, I'm going to give you a challenge here. What is this compared to? The Torah is compared to medicine. Tell me, anybody here, did you ever go to a doctor? If you were ever very sick, the doctor gave you a prescription, and you said, Doctor, I'm not taking it unless I fully understand how this medicine works. I wanted the entire biology and chemistry behind this medicine. I don't think anybody usually does that. If the medication is good, what do they do? They take it. Why? Because they trust their doctor. Akadosh Baruch Hu is a doctor. He gave us this medication. Why should you trust that doctor more than HaKadosh Baruch Hu just because he has a white robe? Just because he has a te'udah that he graduated from school? Maybe he just barely graduated, he got a D minus? And you're taking medication from somebody that got a D minus in medicine? Am I right? You can graduate with a D minus? No? What's the minimum? A C? You're sure? But he's passing grade, he didn't get an F. Maybe would not with the bar. <laughs> the medicine you never know especially if it's in Mexico where you could bribe your way through school <laughs> anyway we trust doctors because they appear to us to be knowledgeable we take their prescriptions even though they scribble it we barely understand what they wrote we need it and therefore we don't ask questions the Torah Dosha is much more than just medication this is something that was given to us by Kadosh Baruch Hu and he's not just a doctor, <laughs> he's the creator of the world. This is a manual which includes the instructions on how to live our lives. So therefore this Torah is a rifut, tehile shorecha. It's like medication, it's like health to your navel, and like marrow to our bones. We can't do without it. The next pasuk, which is already, we're going to finish, we're going to, the chapter is a long chapter, but we're going to just cover just a little bit more. The next pasuk is, Kabed et Adonai mehonecha umereshit kol tibuatecha. We talked about the fact that everything is mehashamayim. We receive blessing from Hashem. If we receive and we acknowledge that this matana, this gift is mehashem, then we have to show our appreciation. Hashem gives us wealth, we have to share it with others. The way we give kavod to Hashem is by acknowledging that it's from Him. How do we acknowledge? We don't just tell Him, Hashem, I know it's from you. No, we use it for good things. 
and we do what He wants us to do with that money. So kabed et Hashem mehonecha, the simple meaning is, honor Hashem with your possessions, honor Hashem with your wealth, with the blessing that He has given you. Because by honoring Him, you are basically acknowledging that you received it from Him, and you're doing the right thing, what He wants you to do with it. But there's a very, very important other meaning to this pasuk, brought down in the Midrash. Kabed et Hashem mehonecha, give honor to Hashem from the talents that He has given you. From that which you personally have received from Him, your gift from Him, give Hashem kavod, use it for what Hashem wants you to use it for. Don't hide it. Definitely don't misuse it. You have a good voice, the Midrash says, be a hazan. You've been given money, use it for good causes. Whatever Hashem has given you personally, that may be your mission in this life. Then use it right, rightly. There's an incredible story in the Midrash with Navot. Anybody who read the Nevi'im, Navot Israeli had a beautiful orchard. Beautiful. Orchard, vineyard. And Ahav, Melech Israel, wanted it for himself. He tried to buy it off. Navot didn't want to sell it. He said, I want it for myself. This is for my family and I want to keep it. I enjoy it. And Ahav, because he was evil and his wife was even more evil than him, found a way to get it. How? He hired two false witnesses to say that this Navot committed a terrible sin and this way they got him killed. They got him killed like this, just like that. And they took away his uh, orchard. Navot was a good guy. Why did he deserve this kind of a punishment? That the king, Ahav, should come and take away, rob him from his orchard? Very strange. There is a pasuk in the Torah that says, When, you, when we go up three times a year to Yerushalayim, to, to be with Hashem in the Bet HaMikdash, Hashem promises that nobody will desire your land, no enemy will invade, you will have no war during that time of the year. Throughout history, throughout Jewish history, you will never find an enemy invading Israel at the best time possible, when all the men are in Yerushalayim, their homes are deserted. Hashem promised, you come see me, nobody will desire your land. But if you don't come, Chaz Shalom, that's something else. Navot had a beautiful voice. And whenever he used to go to Yerushalayim, people used to go just to hear him. One year, for some reason, he did not want to go. He says, I don't want to go. Because he did not want to go, then the promise of the Torah did not come true on him. The promise of the Torah was what? That nobody will desire your land, talking about your enemy. Because he did not go, then somebody did desire his own personal land, his own personal vineyard, his own orchard. The punishment for that was because he did not want to use his voice, the talent that Hashem gave him in the Bet HaMikdash. He did not want to go up that year for some reason. You do not want to go up, then that promise from the Torah will not come true. Somebody will want to take away your land. And that's what happened. Somebody that was given a talent, somebody that is gifted, kabed Hashem onecha, give Hashem honor with that talent that you have. That could be your mission. That is your gift. Use it. Kabed Hashem onecha could also be understood that for Shabbat, one is to buy better food for Shabbat, spend more for Shabbat to give honor to the Shabbat, to give honor to Hashem. Another idea behind giving honor to Hashem is many people spend a lot of money on themselves, on the furniture, on their own personal needs. Kabed Hashem meonecha. At least just as much as you spend on yourself, spend on Hashem. You really, you should spend even more. Give kabot to Hashem, not only give kabot to yourself. Spend on Hashem, on mitzvot. You buy yourself something expensive, the latest car, then don't be cheap when you're buying an etrog. And definitely don't negotiate. You know, some people just are always negotiating. They're even when they're buying fruits and vegetables, they're negotiating. And some people have it in their culture to just negotiate and get the lowest price, even for fruits and vegetables. On a mitzvah, you don't want to negotiate. If the price is something that you can afford, you pay it. You would be willing to pay it for a car, for a new refrigerator. Kabeta Hashem Yonecha, Umereshit Kol and from the first of your fruits, first of your fruits when we had the Mitzvah Bikurim we would bring it to the Bet HaMikdash our first fruits we look forward to it we're excited about it you give that to Hashem the first you only have so much money you only have so much money to buy yourself a new suit for Pesach or to buy your wife a dress Harry what would you do? 
Huh? You don't have a choice, right? Yeah. Well, when it comes to our own personal needs and our wife's needs, the Chachamim already tell us, you tell me gufo. You have to give her more honor than your own body, meaning that you have to respect her and buy for her first. If she needs, especially if she needs, and they always need. <laughs> but when it, when it comes to mitzvot, when it comes to mitzvot, Hashem says, treat me equally at least, at least equally, equally. You spend as, spend on me as much as you spend on yourself. But the reality, the, the reality is, is that Hashem comes first. Even if you don't have what to eat, you're supposed to get yourself some wine and matzot for Pesach, and try to fulfill the mitzvah, borrow money. Even if you don't have anything, the mitzvah comes first. Kabet Hashem onecha, therefore give Hashem the proper kavod from that which He has given you. And as a result of that, the Yimaleu Samecha Sava Vetirosh Yekavecha Ifrotsu. Your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats shall burst out with new wine. With new wine. You will always have plenty. When it comes to giving, Akadosh Baruch Hu always blesses one with prosperity. With Maaser, for example, he says, test me. If you give Maaser, you will always have. When they say Maaser, that if you give Maaser, you will become rich, they don't mean that you will become a millionaire. Maaser you will never be lacking. A true rich man is one who has, he's happy, one who's not lacking. If you give unto others, you will never be lacking. You will always have the blessing. What is this compared to? The commentaries say, to a little baby who's nursing from his mother. As long as he's nursing, the milk will flow. Once he stops nursing, the mother will dry up. The exact same thing is with the blessing of Hashem. Continue to give, and the Kadosh Baruch Hu will continue to give you. And that is why the rabbis tell us, Melach Mamon Chaser. Melach Mamon Chaser. How do we preserve money? How do you, salt is to preserve. How do you preserve your money? Chaser, when you use it, when you give it away. In other words, preservation of money is only by giving it away, only by distributing it to the poor, only by using it correctly. We think we're parting with our money, but that is the way that we are actually preserving the money. So it is a guarantee that we will be blessed. We're not parting with our money, we're not getting rid of it. It's going to come back, and it's going to come back tenfold. This requires, of course, emunah, this requires bitachon, but this is one of those areas where Hashem says, test me, and you will actually see it come for real. I want to wish everybody a hak hashem v'sameach, that Dezat Hashem, this coming Pesach, should, should be a true geulah for every one of us, that we should become free, b'nei chorin, from our sins, and from all our troubles, and that Amish Amish Hashem should see the Yeshua, b'karov amin.